there is no question that we're all tired of passwords. Is a passwordless future really around the corner? It really is around the corner. The, the, the stars are aligning now to get uh, devices. You know, now everyone has a phone in their pocket that allows for much, much stronger authentication than just relying on, you know, your kid's middle name spelled backwards. So when we get to that future, and often it's a lot more complicated than your kid's middle name spelled backwards, how will it work? Sometimes how do we get out. rid of passwords altogether? <laughs> So how do we, yeah, I was saying sometimes you swap out the S for a dollar sign if you're, if you're very fancy. Um, how do we get there? The way we do it is by relying on these devices and basically moving from signing in every app every time that you need to access it to setting up a device like your phone that's in your pocket and that you know already is locked down with your fingerprint or your face and then using that to securely authenticate with the different sites. So Google is sort of in this moment trying to get us halfway there. What exactly are you doing and how do you get us to the final destination that we all so desire? Well, we're on a, a few steps of the journey. The first part is how do you sign into Google and making sure that that is absolutely secure. And that's where the announcement now that we're moving to automatically enroll people in a two-step or two-factor authentication should really, really improve the security and the protection of your Google account. And then the second part is for all the other sites and apps you use, we've been heavily investing in making Chrome, our web browser, and Android automatically fill the passwords for you. And we've actually extended that to iPhones as well. If you install Chrome on your iPhone, there again, it automatically suggests strong passwords and fills it in for you. Combined with this means is that you're in a much, much better protected state and it should be fairly transparent for users. They shouldn't have to worry about it. It shouldn't feel painful or like an inconvenience. Instead, the security just works by default automatically on your behalf. Are there any drawbacks to going passwordless and to having this all stored in one sort of central place? You know, sometimes people think like, do I want to put all my eggs in one basket? That's the most common metaphor or analogy that we hear. But the issue is actually you want to put your eggs in the best defended place. And I think Fort Knox or a bank is a better metaphor saying, you know, you could spread stuff all around, but it's actually better to pick a place where you focused explicitly on locking it down and on security. That's why, as I said, we're making your Google account secure by default automatically with the strongest security that's available, and then tying autofill or these other capabilities to that. So you've got many, many layers of protection that do give you that best, safest, and also streamlined experience. Mark, you've been working in this area at Google for many, many years, and I'm just curious how you're looking at the cyber landscape right now. We have seen the most pernicious hacks in history, the attackers are getting faster, they're getting better. How would you describe the threat level right now? The threat level is absolutely elevated. There's more and more people trying, more and more of these bad actors. And frankly, there's more to lose. As we bring an increasing amount of our lives online, attacks and, and you know online digital hacks can be much more dangerous and much more pernicious. That's why what we're focused on is what are the places that most people are vulnerable and how do we take the biggest chunk out of that? You know, there's a lot of headlines about these scary, what they call zero day attacks where somebody can, you know, go right after the CPU inside your computer. Those are real, those are scary, but far, far more likely and far more dangerous in aggregate is going after your authentication. So phishing, hacking into somebody's account and impersonating them, being able to then access all the materials as if you were them, much more dangerous, much cheaper for the attackers to bring on. And so that's one of the areas that we're focused on with this, uh, this announcement today. Meantime, the US and the UK today released information about Russia's foreign intelligence service and their hackers breaching email to find passwords and other information to further infiltrate or other organizations. What is Google doing to protect its users against this? There again, it's about taking those secure credentials and locking them down in an explicit vault designed for it. And so the Google password manager 
built into Chrome, built into Android, and available on iOS as well, gives you that strong security, gives you that central place. You can also use the Google Security Checkup, g.co slash security checkup, to verify the protections on your account, to make sure that everything's in a good state, to make sure that there's no recent suspicious activity or devices that you maybe sold on eBay and then forgot to sign out of. All of that's bundled together in that g.co slash security checkup. And together, what that does is put people into the best protected place where there's just much less surface area for the attackers to go after. Meantime, Google, along with many other companies, is becoming more flexible about letting employees work from home, work from anywhere. And I know that this is a massive security challenge for all companies. You know, what is Google doing to protect its own employees and all of this, you know, critical and privileged information that you have? And can Google, in fact, protect all of that information as well when employees are dispersed? That has been a priority for us for quite some time. We have an initiative at Google we call it Beyond Corp, which many years ago moved us away from a VPN or from assuming that everyone would plug into a cable right there in the office building to saying the thing that we care about authenticating is the person and the device. So with our Beyond Corp, which now actually we've packaged up to sell to enterprises and businesses, it allows that secure connection wherever you are in the world. We already didn't trust the network. And so when the coronavirus pandemic began and people were working from home, it made it relatively easy for us to do that, in part because we rely on technology like security keys, something that we helped invent many years ago, that provide the strongest protection against password phishing and the types of credential attacks that I mentioned earlier.